Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl and I. And your boy, Stanley. Alright, I'm gonna get this whole YouTube thing down packed at some point. Listen, if you're new to the channel, you like what you see, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Make sure yes, that your bell is pressed in. That will give you notifications whenever we come through with a new video. And we don't be just doing no bullshit stuff. When we do videos, we do videos. And uh, uh Make sure you hit that like button because that like button gets us recognized over here on YouTube, hey. Google, and Google Plus. And hey, at the end of the day, it's a hobby, but God doing it, we want it to be worth our God doing time. Hey. So we back. Um, and for y'all old family members, welcome back home, y'all. Yeah, come, come on back. back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Another season of Queen Sugar. I feel like it came up too fast for me. I, well, that, I missed it. But you remember one time, they used to have like two, three months gaps. In these shows, but now they kind of bring them together, and we're still complaining. <laughs> Never satisfied. Cause I'm what? Cause you black. I know it. <laughs> but anyway, we really wasn't gonna do this because it didn't really give us anything. But at the same time, we realized that this episode is probably gonna set the tone for a whole lot of stuff that's about to come. Yeah. So it's gonna be short. It's gonna be short. It's gonna be short. We're gonna speak that into existence. So we're gonna start off. Um, the title was "Yet Do I Marvel." And just to hit some key points, the first thing that we noticed was that, oh, Hollywood is working. Yeah, he got himself a scaffolding job. At first, I thought he was working over there at Queen Sugar Mill, but that ain't where he at. Nah. He over there, he working for the temp agency, y'all. He's mm -hmm. supposed to be on the three-week assignment. But he has a unique opportunity at this scaffolding plant because um, he has a crew underneath for him. And all of a sudden, this dude shows up. Out of nowhere, in a very non-organic kind of manner, and he kind of placed himself right up underneath of Hollywood, and they have similar backgrounds and similar stories about being on the rig. So how convenient, I, mm -hmm. I say. Um, so I've been watching this dude. So at some point, while Hollywood was doing his work and whatnot, Landry shows up on the job site. So I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like. Is he directly working for Landry or is this somebody that he works for that Landry is good, good boys with? You know, I, I don't know. I think that Landry's probably have an investment in every business besides <laughs> right. Queen Sugar in that freaking town. So then it came up where they actually offered Hollywood a long term permanent position as basically a foreman at yeah. this um, sca it was a scaffolding. Yeah, scaffolding, scaffolding plant company, what have you. Hollywood said he gonna have to take a minute to think about it, but old boy that attached himself to Hollywood was like, hey, I've been uh, laid uh, off for a minute. Yeah. And I need me some smoke. I'll give you your answer today. I, I I'm said, here. I said, did we ever hear what the pay was? Nah. Did we, uh, this but, is important question. Yeah, when you've been laid off, you don't even give a fuck. Yes, you do. If it ain't better than your unemployment check, you better give them. I don't know. So... That happened. Then we have learned through Miss Gail King that the divorce is final, final, final. Say everybody God doing time. So now that it's out there for the masses, look, I buy <laughs> go send um Charlie a um text on some act. I just sent you a clip that it was the clip of Gail King talking about basically how they went from A all the way down to mm -hmm. Z, and she's a free woman, he's a free man. What they gonna do? We don't know. But she, and she down threw some there. shade in there too. Said another celebrity couple done thrown in the towel. Uh huh. <laughs> they did. They just couldn't make it. That couldn't make it. <laughs> well, put that all on Davis right there. Mm hmm. So that happened. So now Miss <clears throat> Charlie is free to go and explore whatever that is that she wants to do with Remy. So. In my mind, like she ain't already been doing it. Yeah, it like might be saying my mind. Huh. I said, um, I know that you 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 real free right now, and you got a divorce, and that's all good. But y'all out in the open, um, sharing beignets, beignets. I said beignets. Goddamn. <laughs> um, and I said, you know what? What you don't want to do is feed the media and have the media saying you've been messing with this dude the whole time before you. I, I think at this point I don't think Charlie gives a fuck. You, you don't all, give all, a fuck. All that bullshit they done went through, they've been in hiding for too long. You don't care, huh? But at the same time, you don't want nobody making no lies up, though. Yeah, you don't. You don't want your good works to be even spoken <laughs> of, like I said over there in Greenleaf. So yeah, so now her and Remy, they they can do whatever they want to do. Next thing we know. 
Charlie and Remy is out on the town trying to do what they do. And Charlie Mama call. Yeah. Talking about something, I want to see you. But guess what? I was already, already here. here. I said, ain't that a mama for you? Uh-huh. They always tell you. We call you when they, when they get there. Because they know you. If you call me beforehand, I'm going to tell you not to come. Don't even come. Let me stop. Well, she should have told that heifer not to come. So she pissed me off. So she shows up. She's the white version of Lala. She look just like She yeah. did look just like Lala. Look just like her. Take the color, boom, Lala, there you got her. Yep. And just most. make her just a little bit more, turn her contrast up just a little bit. <laughs> the bright. <laughs> <laughs> so we had already learned that Charlie's mama is a perfectionist. Nothing's good enough. It's mm -hmm. her way or no way. And we saw that. Yeah. She came in, your hair, you this. Oh, so you doing, you milling now? And you, you have satisfied with that? Yeah, you supposed to be out there managing another ball player or doing something like that. You just you can't be happy doing this. And then when she took her over there to the loft where she's living at, she was like, "This cannot compete with what Davis West is doing." I was like, "What?" She was like, "I'm not competing with Davis West." And I got what she was saying. She was like, "You're not competing, but you are competing because everybody's going to compare everything that Davis West does." And everything that you're doing. He's living like this. And you over here living like this. Which ain't nothing wrong with the way Charlie yeah. living. And she said it. So mama decided to meet Charlie in the middle. If this is what you want to do. You want to look. You, yeah. want, you want to explore your pro black. You know you want to have your hair open. And doing all of that. Let, at least let me buy your rug. Yeah. Put your rug down and, <laughs> and fix these rafters. I don't know what the hell she going to do with the rafters. I mean. They just there. You can't take them down. They holding up the freaking building. So I don't know. which You can paint them. But I, I just don't even know. So, but uh, you can go on back out there on that cruise ship as far as I care. I don't know if you was on a Norwegian carnival. She was on Norwegian. The Disney cruise line. Whatever one you was out there sipping your wine and Kool-Aid, whatever you were drinking, take your home parts back because... We don't need you. Yeah, we don't need you. Yeah, because the mama's been absent all this time because basically she said, I had to get away. I had to clear my mind. Some things were on my mind. And I don't know if I heard it right and I refused to rewind it back because it was such a slow episode that I just couldn't delay it anymore. Did Charlie say, you come down here right after I don't bury my daddy, your late husband? I said, hold on, no, what? She did say did that. Did she say that? Or was it just me? Cause she I did. Didn't, she did I didn't say think that. she was married to Ernest. I thought she was just a side piece that got married. I mean, that got knocked up and had a baby. I don't know. She showed sure up dead. Because that changed Unless the whole Unless there was a mistake in the script. Or unless she was saying something else and we just heard something else. That's exactly what she sounded like. Say, yo, your late husband. I said, oh, okay. So mama said, listen, I couldn't be there for you because I had to, I had, I just had to get away and it was something about the water. It is something about the water. I'm telling you, if you want to clear your thoughts, go by the, don't go at night. If you certainly if you live in the city because you might end up in the water. <laughs> but go like down donkey. to the water. Yeah. I'm telling you, just like God speaks, I'm trying to tell you. See her, see her mama got black tennis shoes with white skin. See, black people like to show up with all the hard work been taken care of. Mm. And so they can reap some of the benefit. That's what her mama coming in now, sweeping it after the funeral was over with. After they done got Ralph Angel and them straight. <laughs> after the meal is up and running. After all these meetings with everybody for trying to figure out if if no is not Nova, if uh, Charlie is genuine or not, or she's just trying to Get in where she fit in, get in how I live. And now you want to come in, but your critique, she should have got slapped. That's what she that, really should have. She should have got slapped. And the part that got me was then when she took her over there to Queen Sugar Mill. Now, this is her time to really impress Mama. Mama, I don't get it big. I'm the first Her's black that. woman that ever ran a mill, owned a mill. And you know, you should be proud of me. And she still was skitting on what yeah. she was doing. Mm -hmm. Still skitting on. But you want to know what really intrigued her? Remy. Yeah. All of a sudden, when she met Remy, she perked up. Wanted to get to know him a little better. Talking about some, oh, so you're the reason that my daughter has explored all of this. And she has a new business venture and all of this. So let me get to know you better. What, what's, yeah, what's that? You trying yeah. to get another black man in your pocket? I'm, huh. mm, I'm watching this mama. I, 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 she redeemed herself a little bit at the end. And, and I'll get just, a, just a little bit. I'll get there. But I still don't like her. No, I don't. No. I don't. So... Now we're over there with Davis West. Davis West, see they're going to make us like Davis West this year. 
I guess I'm gonna have to be here for it, cause I give credit mm -hmm. where credit is due. Yeah, see, I mean, he a cool dude. He just, he just, he's just a he cheat. Just, yeah, he's got some push beyond his contract. You stupid. <laughs> Wedding contract or marital contract. That's the, that's that's the only thing that he did. That we know of. That we know of. Like somebody said in the comments, when you when you admit to one, that means you did twenty. <laughs> so. Davis is talking to his son and he was like, listen, I've been wanting to talk to you for a hot minute and a half. Ever since you told me about what the cop did to you, as y'all remember, Micah confessed that the cop basically took him out somewhere dark, took his gun, put it in his mouth, pulled the trigger. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't nothing in it or we hope. So he said, listen, we need to tell your mom. Micah is not here for it. He said, Mama only wants to hear the good things in life. She only wants to hear that I'm making A's, this, that, and mm -hmm. that. She don't want to hear the grindy stuff. And I like what Davis West said. Listen, being a parent, we don't get to pick and choose what yeah. information that our children share with us. At the end of the day, this happened to you, and we have to tell your mom. Yeah. But he wasn't, he wasn't here for it. But I like what Davis West said. He said, listen, we're going to have to tell your mom. Yeah. It is, well, this is something we cannot hold from her. And he, Michael went on his, well, mama didn't stay with the marriage. Mama didn't do this and mama mm -hmm. didn't do this. And Davis West checked him real good and said, yep. listen, your mama's a good woman. Yep. Your mama stood by me way more and way and further than any other woman would have. Yeah. So in that regard, your mother did everything and beyond to actually try to make this marriage work. At the end of the day, it was me. And I'm glad I'm glad he did that because a lot of kids don't get to hear that from a parent. Mm -hmm. Most of the time what they end up hearing is how terrible the, their daddy was or how terrible their mama was. So whoever presence they in, their parents are dogging the other one. And, but and they I'm pick a side. Yeah, but so I'm glad that he didn't pick that side to be like, your mama is a hero. Yeah. In so many words. She's a good woman. And uh, <clears throat> she's going to be good to you in this situation right here. So mm -hmm. you just need to hear. We need to tell her. And hear what she got to say. And what so, happened after that. So, Davis called. Told her, get on over here. We got something to tell you. And they basically sat her down and told her what had happened. And Charlie went right into fix mode. And mm -hmm. I'm with Charlie on this one. But I also understand Micah. Yeah. Charlie was like, we have to do something. Because basically, if you let them get away with it, it's going to continue to happen. But mm -hmm. Micah is saying, listen, I'm going to have to relive this again. Put myself in danger mm -hmm. all over again because once I put it out there, they gonna be on my tail. Yeah. So, j just let me process it the way I want to process it and release and move on. I just don't want to go through that. Now Davis is on this on the um, he's on the thing of I'm gonna let Micah choose the way he you wants this to be handled, it. which mm -hmm. I'm very surprised. Yeah, because as a man. But at the same time, but you can like, see, the, but you can see the expression on his face. He didn't like it. He didn't like yeah, it. Yeah, he wanted. To, he really want to deal with it. But at the same time, they do need Michael, Michael Micah, Micah's consent because you don't want him to go into that with all that anxiety and fear because it's gonna be a lot put on him to do. Yeah, and I actually thought about it from a standpoint of like rape victims and molestation victims and stuff like that. A lot of people don't pursue getting their uh, offender persecuted or whatever because they have to relive it go through it all over again go through you're lying you did yeah Should the person I? denied so it they didn't do they'd it they rather would just go ahead and process it the way that they will process mm -hmm. it and just let it go and basically like the old folks say let the good law take care of <laughs> yeah and now, I, now the one thing i would do with micah is that i would as a parent i would impress upon him counseling oh it wouldn't be a choice yeah that wouldn't be a choice because there's no way he could process Mm -mm. A cop putting a gun in his mouth and pulling the trigger, and him relieving that he he is he it's gonna, it's, gonna, it's gonna come out in anger in so many different ways if he don't deal with it. So I would let him slide as far as dealing with it, as far as the law until he read it. But the counseling piece, I put my foot down. Be like, yeah. player, you going to a counselor? I don't care what you say. Yeah, and you know what it is. Take your phone from it. You don't go to yeah. counselor. You ain't mm -hmm. got a phone. Look, yep. any teenager will go to counselor. I'll take counselor for two hundred dollars. So I get my, my my new iPhone eight that. <laughs> so now we got um little blue. My I love little blue. Blue has a school project, y'all, and he has to make a family tree. So now he's sitting there with his mom and daddy. He's asking his dad all these questions about his daddy, his daddy's side of the family, your mama, all of this good stuff. But Ralph Angel didn't seem to have a lot of things from his mother. Yeah. So he ended up having to go over to Nova's to get pictures of his mother for the family tree. And then when Lil Blue was asking his mom, you know, what about your mom? Da, 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 da. 
we keep seeing Darla freeze up yeah. when it comes time to talk about her side of the family. Now, we already had heard her tell um, Charlie when her and Charlie was having this moment of bonding that their parents were kind of alike. They were perfectionists. It was their way or no mm -hmm. way. Da, da, da. But at this moment, I'm learning that they ain't got nothing going on. Yeah, I think I think when she had the addiction that dawn, um, they cut her off. And I can't be mad at that. Yeah, she because she probably dogged them out. She probably stole from them and mm -hmm. wasn't coming around. Yeah. Or if she did come around, she wanted money to support the habit. So, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Of. Yeah, because what you gotta yeah. feel, realize is when you dealing with somebody with an addiction, and I can only speak of it from having someone that has had a drug addiction. Like my dad is an alcoholic, but I ain't never deal with him like that. So I can't really tell you how to cope with that because I could leave. <laughs> but, you know, dealing with somebody that had drug addiction, that, they take over your life. It's their way, their timing, when they feel like it, whatever mood they're in that day, that's the mood of the house. I mean, it's everything. So when you get fed up and you get sick and tired and people cut you off, trust me, they have tried a million times yeah. to not do it. So when they do it, I can't feel bad. Mm -hmm. Because I know for for somebody that's gone through it, if I cut you off, that means I don't went to hell and back. And there's nothing else I can do. Yeah. And what crackheads had to realize, or ex-crackheads or motivational speakers, as my husband would say, <laughs> is you have to work your way back into people's lives. Yeah. Because you are professional, motivational, motivational. speakers. Yeah. You can say the right <clears throat> thing, do the right thing, all of that to throw everybody off. To get what you want. To get what you want. Let them, their guard to be down. And yeah. they say, you know, boom. Yep. You don't blew up and, and spot they'll, again. They'll do it once you get to the height of your trust for them again. Yes. And then they'll break you down. Yeah. So I'm thinking that's what's going on with Amdala and her family. We actually saw at some point she called her mom and dad and she left a message and she was telling them that she and um Ralph Angel's getting married. Mm -hmm. That she has been clean for two years. So evidently it's been two plus years yes. that they spoke and she actually talked about blue. Said blue is going to be six and this. So they don't have anything going on with that side of the family. They told baby blue that mom and dad are going to be getting married. And he just happens to June bug. Yep. And he couldn't he, wait to tell everybody said, else. He's going to be forever. 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 Ever. <laughs> So when they did go over to Nova's house to get the picture, that's the first thing Blue said, hey, I know them. My mom and dad are getting married, child. Oh, Nova was like, shoot, the kids know it. They're going to tell it. That's why you got to be careful what you tell kids, boy. But you know what confused me, though? Starting off this way and from where we left off at, mm -hmm. they must have had a family reunion. Because yeah. everybody calm. Yeah. Everybody cool. They not fighting about the, they didn't even talk about the farm like talking about. Yeah. And I'm sitting here like. But they did say in the episode that, uh, that on Vibe wanted them to get together. So, you know, fix that situation yet, because that ain't fixed yet. Yeah. So, speaking of on Vibe, what, what we not going to do. See, there's two people that are off limits for this show. With three, actually. Blue, um, on Vibe, and Hollywood. Them three right there. You. Don't write nothing about them that I can't handle. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you when 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 Hollywood almost got blew up on that rig. Uh -huh. I almost lost my guy. When they were coming, they were coming out that bus. We was like, I was like, where, like, he, where at? he at? Where he at? Every big black man got up uh -huh. that bus. What? I said that. Nah, they ain't him. Don't mess with Blue. <laughs> and don't mess with Aunt Vi. Aunt Vi got something going on. She went to the hairdresser. And the hairdresser, listen, your hairdresser is the first person that notices. Anything that's going on with you. And mm -hmm. they'll tell you straight up, baby, you need to go see a dermatologist. You need to go see GYN. Yeah, 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 you need, to, you need to change your blood pressure pills. You need mm -hmm. to do something with your hair shit. Because your hair would tell on you. So, she was like, no, mm -hmm. it's wrong with me. Yeah, it's my wigs. It's that's my what wig. it is. That's what it is. <laughs> I said, don't do that. Don't do that. I, now, me, I personally don't know much about weeds, mm -hmm. but I know that weeds don't pull your hair out like that. Cause if they, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. But you. in my, I ain't going to say experience, but what I've been told <laughs> is like when you be getting the plaques and stuff and you and get it pulled too tight, they can pull your hair yeah. out. But she ain't had not nail braids I've been wearing weeds for forever. And i would be cutting, I take chunks of my hair and just cut it. Don't, don't worry <laughs> about it. I know. I know. 
as soon as it get the bow right here, it's got to be cut right back up here. Or she or she been using that that uh that hot cone you put on the stove a little bit too much and burn it out. With that goddamn royal crown grease. So we learned that something's going on with her. At one point, she was signing these documents for this guy. I guess she was doing some kind of contract. Her vision went out on her. I mm -hmm. said, "Oh no, not we we not doing this." And that's a sign of could be a sign of cancer. Yeah, and then even Hollywood. Hollywood yeah. was peeping the fact that he was talking to her about, you know, possibly getting a full-time position over there at um, whatever. And he kept saying, you sure right. you okay? I'm fine. Don't I look fine? You sure you okay? And I said, everybody else is peeping that something ain't right yeah, when I'm back. She could be a um, diabetic. diabetic. I mean, yeah. breast cancer. I mean, so many different so many. She said she's been through the change already, so. Yeah, so I, I don't know. Be so many things. So now we see like a change in Nova's narrative. I mean, come on. We go from fighting for the kids and all this. Now she's on the Zika thing. And the black community ain't feeling it because she, they feel like she instilling fear in everybody mm -hmm. in New Orleans in the ninth by talking about the Zika when there's only been 20 people that don't <laughs> had it down here. So where's this outbreak that you keep scaring us with? And guess who else ain't feeling it? Chantal. Yeah, yeah. Chantal said, listen, you don't came up and through here, got you a new boo right here, threw me off. Mm hmm And now I'm not... I'm I don't not... even know what you believe no more. <laughs> no, but told Chantal, I've been down here in these streets. Yeah, I've been with these people. Yeah, when everybody else left, I'm still here. I said, you got a point. But did y'all catch when um, Mr. Dubois, Dr. Dubois, came up in the house when um, Ralph Angel and Blue was there? She said, oh, he was just jogging and going by and just stopped by. So oh, wait a minute. So you ain't told him yet. You, you keeping him a secret? Yep, that's exactly what she doing. I said, okay, whatever. But we know <laughs> how Nova do. Mm -hmm. The only thing I will say about Nova and this dude is that she just don't seem comfortable with him yet. Yeah. It's like, but, you, but, you, but that's always been her though. No. Like, no. If, if it wasn't for Aunt Vi, she wouldn't be with him now. Cause she came back to the house. Well, you know, I, I can't do it. On by said, if he, you think he a good man, you need to get him. You need to snatch him up. And she said, if I were younger, I'd break him uh, in my mouth. Do, so. <laughs> do you? So mm -hmm. the last thing that I'm going to talk about, cause we got a review. It'll be tomorrow. Charlie goes home, and evidently, well, it ain't the last thing. No, let me talk about this first. They don't plan a surprise little get together to celebrate um, Ralph Angel and Dollar getting married. Mm -hmm. And surprisingly, everybody is happy as heck for them. I, I, thought, I thought they was going to be pissed off for real, for real. That's why I said they had, they had a whole lot of change of heart. Yeah. But Unvi was the one that she was like, you sure? Because y'all been doing really good at these baby these steps. And this shoes. is a really big step. Do y'all sure? This is what y'all want to do. And Ralph Angel was like, yeah, I've never been sure of anything else up in yeah, my life. He said, you got some kind of got to bet on yourself. That's so, so true. Aunt Vi said, well, come on over here, baby, and give me a hug. She said, all right, Miss Vi. She said, no, no, no. It's Aunt Vi to you. So then they went ahead and had this celebration on and all this good stuff. And you could tell that Charlie was still, she was out. Yeah, and Nova picked it up. And Nova said, what's going on? She said, listen, something happened to Charlie. I mean, to um, Michael. Nova did the aunt look. Let's go. Let's go outside. Yeah, let's go outside. Let's, I got my nine. You ready? <laughs> so then the last part we're going to talk about is Charlie's mama. See, Charlie's mama ain't invited to none of the, the family functions. Yeah, she bucked up with her aunt Vi. Yeah. Yeah. So then this is where the part where I said she kind of redeemed herself a little bit. Because Charlie was able to talk to her mama and really pour her heart out. And she was like, mama... I failed Micah as a mom, you know, I, my job was to protect him and I didn't do that. And me having a black son, I feel like I did not prepare him, him to live in the dirty, dirty South. And that thing hit because yeah. I'm trying to tell you, it's a different breed here. I, you can't even explain it. Yeah, you got to live it. You got to, live you got to live in the South in order to get it. Mm -hmm. And just because... Your eyes are open. Sometimes don't mean your eyes are open. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you act like they ain't open, don't think for a minute they're not open. Mm -hmm. So, and don't think that everybody they skin and grin and da 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 da. 
because oh, that's be the main one because I had somebody tell me on Saturday on Facebook while I was talking to another one of my white um, schoolmates about a conversation that we both were having a great dialogue about he told me basically if I didn't like police brutality I need to go back to my country yeah mm -hmm. and I went and broke his hand pass all the way down and I said you can't afford for me to leave your country because your country ain't skit without us. Matter of fact, your country don't even belong to you. You stole it. Mm -hmm. And if you want to keep on wearing that cotton tee that you got on your profile pic, you need to go ahead and take that off yep. and get that back. Cause like the lady said on Facebook, I'm taking all that skit back with me. If yes, I go. indeed. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? See stuff like this show you evil lurks. Exactly. So she, you know, um, Charlie's mama told her, said, listen, you <clears> did the best that you could. I did the best that I could. I realized that I, at when I birthed you, mm -hmm. I then had a black daughter that I had to prepare to live in this world. And she told us, she said, I sent you off to boarding school because I knew that you would have a disadvantage right out the gate. And I said, well, dang. Yeah. Thank you for recognizing that. Mm -hmm. And Charlie was like, but you sent me to boarding school and when I came back, I lived in a white world that I wasn't able to explore my blackness in. Yeah, I had to dim down my blackness. And I totally understand. I mean, she hit that She was, hit it over the head. She hit home. You can say a whole lot about that right there. And then she said, so the only time that I could explore my blackness was in the summers when I came down here with them. Mm -hmm. And then basically by the time I learned how to maneuver that, it was time to go, go back, back and live white. Mm -hmm. You know? So she was like you did the best you could but mama you don't understand and she was like what do you mean i don't understand you don't, i don't understand because i'm white she said yes yeah, you will you never, never understand, understand because you're not black that's right and i said you know what and i was having a conversation with my co-worker about this and she's white but we have the greatest conversations and um i was saying there are some things that i pick up on that you would never pick up on because it's not for you it's for me. The message ain't for you. Mm -hmm. The shade ain't for you. I said, so a lot of times when we hear their president, because it's not mine, um, say stuff, a lot of people was like, why are, why are everybody so offended? Because what he's saying goes beyond you. Yeah. He's hitting who he needs to hit with that. But mm -hmm. you're not able to pick up on it because he's not talking to you. Exactly. He's talking and he's using lingo that only we would know that he's talking skit about us. Yeah. He's doing stuff. Just like when he told the uh, football players to get your mother hey, on the field and play. That's almost like when they used to do the slaves back in the day. Let, let y'all get together, fight, do the mm -hmm. little ring stuff, and we can sit back and enjoy, enjoy and smoke yeah. our cigarettes and drink our yak. Because all I want to do is see you I get want on you the just, field yeah, I just want you to entertain me. me. That's what I want you to do. Now, I don't want you to make no changes. And I don't want you to speak yeah. up. Yeah, you don't speak up. Now you keep your mouth shut. Entertain me. Yep. Because I don't have a hard week. Can we just get along on Sundays? No. Yeah. This is not what we're doing. And, and protesting is not for the football field. Where, but but you make time to protest on your job. And talk about it on your, your job. job. Okay. But I, like I told him, I said, we don't pay football players no mind when they're everywhere else. Where we pay them mind at? On their job. On the job. So that's where they do it at. But anyway, another story. We're going to continue this conversation tomorrow when we get deeper into Queen Sugar. It was kind of slow, so we just gave y'all the basics to go ahead yeah. and get this ball rolling. So straight from the VA. Dirty, dirty south. Two up, two down. Holla. Holla.